Welcome to Appreciating the Complexity of Nursing Work, Implications for Education. This is a two-part module. Part one will focus on the characteristics of complex adaptive systems, and part two will focus on the challenges of preparing students to practice in complex systems given the new learning we have about nursing work complexity. We will then explore teaching strategies that prepare students to deliver safe, quality nursing care within complex adaptive systems in healthcare. After the Institute of Medicine report to Error is Human was published in 2000, it became clear to most of us in healthcare that we were not doing enough to prevent harm to those who were cared for in our organizations. At the time, most healthcare providers thought that if we educated healthcare providers sufficiently and often enough and held them accountable through monitoring and discipline when necessary, we could assure safe, quality care. Yet despite enormous amounts of time and resources spent collecting data on whether people were doing the right thing, sustained improvement in actual outcomes was rarely achieved. Some researchers and healthcare providers began to look seriously outside the healthcare field for guidance to decrease the numbers of patients who were harmed as a result of contact with the medical care system. Those outside the healthcare field, like the airline and nuclear industries, had been working on safety through a different lens than those of us in healthcare. In fact, they proposed that the major barrier to making progress in safety and quality was not a primary failure in educating people and holding them accountable, but the failure to appreciate the complexity of work. From other industries and disciplines, we learned that even the best health care providers, imperfect due to normal human limitations, did not always achieve expected outcomes despite their best intentions and efforts when working in the midst of complex and evolving situations. Researchers including Reason, Klein, Woods, Patterson, and others who focused on human performance behaviors complexity science frameworks were interested in how workers made decisions during work in actual work situations. Situations that appeared to be sometimes chaotic and created pressure for those needing to make decisions rapidly. These researchers recognized that some work environments were characterized by a set of conditions that contributed to the difficulty in carrying out procedures and clinical decisions that looked simple when presented on the printed page, even though they could be articulated clearly by workers outside the context of actual care, in the classroom or lab, or on tests. Characteristics of these work environments included time pressure constraints, high stakes for error and potential for catastrophic outcomes, inadequate information, ill-defined goals across people or within teams, poorly defined procedures or processes, dynamic working conditions, teams of people needing to rely on one another, and stress. But the actual work complexity in these environments was found to challenge even the best of workers to the extent that they failed to reach intended outcomes. For example, Klein was interested in how individual firefighters made decisions about what to do while at the scene of a fire. Other examples of workers who have been studied in similar environments have been space mission control, military, airline, and nuclear power plant workers. These workers have been found to make decisions through a similar process when working in complex environments. It became clear through research using methods that included talking with, listening to, and observing healthcare workers about details of actual work situations. The places where nurses deliver care have these same characteristics. And nurses use similar processes of decision-making, not only about implementation of appropriate clinical interventions, but also for decisions about the organization and prioritization of all care activities throughout a work shift. 
Researchers who study the decisions people make in complex environments describe the decision-making process as matching puzzle pieces, whereby people see patterns in the cues, expectancy, goals, and actions in a current situation that seem to be a good fit with situations similar to what they have experienced before. Klein's recognition prime decision model represents this type of decision-making. Persons in complex work environments rarely use logical, problem-solving strategies to choose the best alternative in time-pressured situations. What Klein reported is that people immediately match what they are seeing to previous experiences and then immediately do a cognitive run-through of the solution for the problem based on past experiences. As the emerging situation, due to responses to interventions or new information, varies from what they had expected, people adjust their actions to fit. Therefore, access to timely and accurate information is key to coming up with the right next action. Given this model, it is reasonable why people with more experience and therefore more previous situational knowledge and also for those people who have the ability to sort what is pertinent for the present situation deal with complex situations and surprise with more confidence. So why does working in complex environments such as healthcare and the others mentioned present such a challenge to making the right decisions and avoiding mistakes and possibly harm. These environments are described as being prone to distraction. So you might ask, why can't people just focus? If we consider the points at which breakdown may occur, given Klein's model of decision making, there are several places where distraction may cause problems. There is the experience issue, for one, and we know from nursing research that increasing complexity leads to increased anxiety in less experienced nurses, more than those with a lot of clinical experience. Distracting environments may cause even more problems for students and new nurses. Secondly, distraction may prevent even experienced nurses from assessing the cues present in a chaotic situation and then lead to incorrect matching and decisions regarding the most appropriate action to take. And then there are the normal limitations that we have as humans that can get in the way of seemingly simple problems like memory limitations for the number of things we can recall at any one point in time, or our tendencies toward bias with even weak confirmation of current thinking. And then, of course, our decreased functional abilities in the presence of physical illness. Because we are human and have limitations in what we can remember or attend to at one time, we can end up doing the wrong action in two ways. We can slip or we can make mistakes. Let's consider slips first. One way we can slip is to make a good decision but fail to carry it out due to a slip that leads to the action not reaching its target in the manner intended. This is an example of capture, which one person described by sharing the following. She left the house early one morning after loading her two children in the car and didn't know she was actually headed straight for work until her daughter reminded her it was Saturday morning and they were supposed to be going to soccer practice. Another way we can slip is called description. An example of description is when during your morning routine you reach for the tube of toothpaste uh, to put on your brush, but instead grab hair gel, which sits where the toothpaste usually sits. It is not until you start to brush that you realize the slip. Manufacturers of different kinds of medical tubing used frequently in healthcare now design connections such that only one type of tubing can be attached easily to the intended device. These error-proofing designs have been in response to healthcare provider slips in reconnecting tubing to the wrong sites. Like sounding and similarly packaged drugs are now more individually designed to eliminate errors that may occur when providers are time pressured and relying on shortcut routines to maintain efficiency. 
Another path to the wrong action is to have chosen the wrong plan in the first place due to misinterpretation of the problem. For example, too many distractions to sort out relevant cues, or lack of experience or ability to see the pattern. Or it may be due to lack of a specific knowledge about aspects of the situation. For example, differences in pediatric versus adult doses. We have a tendency to move forward with activities and interventions when we have information or cues indicating that we are headed in the right direction. A problem occurs, however, as we become too confident in our assessments. Overconfidence can result in a bias toward new information. We pay more attention to that information that confirms our assessment. We may also be biased against new information, in essence minimizing the importance of new information that does not fit our assessment. Many factors about us as humans, or due to our environment and our relationships with others, may be sources of distraction and divert attention as we deliver care. Physiological, psychological, and environmental factors that diminish our ability to attend to information or recognize incoming cues can influence our decision making in complex environments or situations. Patterson studied nurses' work and represented much of one nurse's work over seven hours in this timeline. Multiple and variable types of activities were observed directly and plotted. The potential impact of unpredictability on the attention required to go from one activity to the next over the seven-hour period can be appreciated visually. And as represented by the continuous stream of thoughts and decision-making as the nurse responds behaviorally across the timeline, the complexity of the cognitive work becomes clearer also. It becomes clearer by representing work in this way, rather than as a time-independent list of activities, that nursing work is not a simple predictable process, nor is it free from the impact of human limitations within complex and distracting environments. Imagine the complexity of managing multiple care delivery activities by one nurse as represented, while encountering the obstacles identified in research on nursing work that include missing or broken equipment, waiting on access to or availability of needed resources, interruptions, poor communication, and the adjustment required to the implementation of multiple changes in current care delivery processes. However, the impact of complexity in the workplace is often overlooked in large part because experienced nurses successfully adapt to the environment or they create workaround activities performed to help them manage complex environments. These kinds of activities, for example adapting and workarounds, just become a routine part of the work. Until the 2000 Institute of Medicine report, and subsequent focus on systems thinking by healthcare organizations interested in improving patient safety, this aspect of nurses' work and the impact on performance was essentially ignored by most of those managing and administering healthcare services, and particularly by those teaching future healthcare workers. Lindbergh and Lindbergh provide a basic primer on the characteristics of complex adaptive systems and make the case for using complexity science to help understand and explain why our traditional linear approaches to nursing practice and the education of RNs is not sufficient for provision of safe and quality care. Complexity science is an interdisciplinary field built on multiple frameworks to examine the principles about how systems evolve and maintain order despite multiple and diverse interacting units. A complex adaptive system, or CAS, is a complex nonlinear interactive system or unit which has the ability to adapt to a changing environment and is characterized by certain properties. Properties of CASs include those represented on this diagram and include embeddedness, distributed control, 
nonlinear, adaptable elements, emergence, diversity, order, disorder, and self-organization. The web connecting CAS properties is used to represent the CAS, a dynamic, interconnected, interdependent, adaptive and diverse system, which manifests these properties. Part 2 of the learning module on appreciating the complexity of nursing work, implications for education, will focus on recent nursing research findings related to the complex work of nursing and representative of the complex adaptive system and complex adaptive systems within our healthcare organizations.